I'm uh, going to call to order the uh, meeting for the Haverford Township Planning Commission meeting for Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. Um, Margie, could you call roll, please? Mr. Capuzzi. Present. Mr. Shannon. Present. Ms. Dobbs. Mr. Fiordimondo. Present. Mr. Gary. Present. Ms. Phillips. Present. Mr. Montresor. Present. Would everyone please stand and join me with, in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic and one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Ms. Dobbs is here also. Uh, welcome, everyone. Nice to see you all here tonight. Uh, we have one thing on our agenda before we get to the comprehensive plan, and that is a lot line change for a property at the corner of Ardmore Avenue and Darby Road. And I see Mr. O'Neill here from the Combi Engineers. Good evening, my name is Dennis O'Neill. I'm with Herbert McCombie's office. We're the engineer of record for the plan. As uh, Chairman Capuzzi said, the site is located on the northwesterly corner of Ardmore and Darby Roads. Uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, the applicant, owns two Ardmore Avenue, which is the lot on the corner. Um, Ms. DeColey, um, owns 10 Ardmore, which is the first lot in. Both of those lots have existing residential units on them and a number of other improvements on the site. Uh, the DeColeys also own uh, what we're showing on this plan outlined in orange is lot three, which fronts Darby Road, um, has uh, area across the back of both lots. Uh, Mr. Murphy has um, asked the Coley's to purchase a portion of that lot to uh, get a larger backyard for his for his property. So we are um, proposing to subdivide that lot into two lots, um, and each of those lots would gain about half of of that lot. All three of these lots are existing non-conforming uh, with regard to a number of non-conformities, not the least of which is lot area. Uh, this is an R1 district, requires a one-acre zoning. Um, these lots are 19, 20,000 apiece. Uh, after this subdivision, uh, number two Ardmore will be almost 27,000 square feet, and 10 will be just over 26,000 square feet. It's a little less non-conforming in regards to lot area. Um, there is no development proposed as part of this. This is uh, merely so that the Murphys can get a larger back, backyard um, from that open space that's behind them. Um, the plan has been before the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, we, we requested variances for um, the ability to subdivide non-conforming lots and to maintain the uh, impervious cover on 10 Ardmore, which will uh, continue to be over the impervious area. Um, so, all, And then there's a side yard issue uh, on lot 10 as well, which is existing. Um, and those non-conformities will remain the zoning hearing board, granted the variances uh, for those. It's a very simple subdivision, probably one of the simplest you've seen in a long time. Uh, there's no, as I said, there's no development proposed here. One to the right is 10? And the one to the right is two. That's the corner lot. The one in blue is 10. We did receive the township engineer's letter. And... Um, I think the, the, the most obvious comment there is sidewalk and curb along Darby and Ardmore. 
Um, we are going to request a waiver. We're aware of the Board of Commissioners' reluctance to grant that waive, those types of waivers. Um, however, uh, we believe that this is, um, one, there's some uh, financial issues with the cost of, of putting sidewalk in. These are two state highways. Uh, we'd have some drainage issues that, in addition to sidewalk and curb that we would probably have to deal with. And when the, when the Commonwealth came and widened the radius along the, the corner of Ardmore and Darby, they took some, some land from number two, uh, Ardmore. And you can see that the, the street is still very close to their, to their lot line, the right away of the street. So there's not a whole lot of room there to put, put sidewalk in. Uh, if you went uh, north on Ardmore, it gets kind of steep along there. And if you go west on, or I'm sorry, north on Darby, if you go west on Ardmore, uh, there is a wall across the front of number 10, which limits the amount of space between where a curb would be and a, and a sidewalk. So we believe that this is probably a, a, an extraordinary case of, of uh, not sufficient room or area to put sidewalk in, in addition to the financial burden um, for this simple subdivision. So we, we would request waivers for for those two items, uh, 165B4A curb and uh, 165B4C for sidewalk. That's all I have. I can answer any questions you might have about the plan. Uh, Joel, you have any questions or comments? Um, no, I do not. Rob? Out of curiosity, What's the age of the two properties? Do you know? I don't know what the age of them is. I know they're, you mean that when they were originally created? When, when were the properties created and how old are the houses on the properties? Um, 1920s. 1920s, okay. I have no reservations as to what's being proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it appears there's an existing fence on lot three yes. that belongs to 10. Correct. Ardmore. Is that going to be removed then? Yes. Okay. And then the driveway, can you explain a little bit more? So the asphalt driveway that currently takes access from Darby that leads to the rear of 10 Ardmore that's to remain, and then a portion is being removed to conform to side yard setbacks or driveways. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. So then that driveway will then become the property of two Ardmore? That is correct, yes. And then from an addressing perspective, um, I don't know if this is the case in Delaware County as well, but um, addresses should be on the street from which the driveway takes access for EMS purposes. I don't know, is that a requirement in Delaware County as well, Ellie? Yeah. It's not. Um, as a matter of fact, we have many issues with that. Um, the address being, you know, um, on the, you know, where they've decided to move a driveway along the line or, you know, over the years or what have you. Um, or people just, you know, deciding to choose their own mailing address over the years. Um, so no, it, it is not a requirement here. Um, but, um, but it may be appropriate to change that, um, if they were only keeping one of the driveways on Darby Road. Yeah, only just because, so 2 Ardmore Avenue has a driveway on Ardmore Avenue and on Darby and now they're gaining a second driveway on Darby. So this property then has three curb cuts. Correct. Does, is this not? Oh, yes. Okay. Because yeah. there's one that's in yeah. front of the house. Because the, the house looks like it faces Darby. 
It does, and there's a driveway. And then there's from a the driveway room. in the front, and then there's a right. driveway to the rear that takes access off of Ardmore, and the the driveway that now just a stub out driveway on also on Darby. So I don't know what the intent of the use of those um, driveways would be for that property owner. Um, it just seems like a lot of curb cuts and a lot of impervious cover that that may or may not actually service their needs um, and just creates a lot of confusion for EMS services. Um, so I would encourage the property owner to consider kind of taking one of the driveways and sticking with it. Um, I know living there and changing the address is a, is a huge pain, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But just from an EMS perspective, if, the, if EMS can't gain access to the house from one of those other driveways that are on Darby or from Ardmore, because I guess if the property is addressed on Ardmore, that would be where EMS would naturally go to. So if that rear driveway doesn't actually service the property well, um, then that could be problematic to, to emergency services. Um, but more just a, a comment that there are three curb cuts, three driveways now servicing that one property, which just seems a lot. Um, and then, but, but otherwise in terms of the actual um, scope of the, the project, uh, you know, would be in support of the lot line change um, my only other comment would be right now the waivers requested um, on the plans are limited to um, the two foot contours and then the uh, storm drainage, sanitary sewer, and public water supply lines or facilities. Um, so the plan that gets recorded just needs to be updated yes. to request the additional waivers um, that you are requesting tonight from curbing and sidewalk. Um, I would have no opposition to any of those waivers being requested. And then I would also uh, recommend, uh, under the variance as requested, you include the date of the zoning hearing board with the date of approval from those waivers that were granted by the zoning hearing board. Yeah, when we revise the plan after all the approvals, we'll put the actual decision on the plan. Right, yes. It just happened a couple of weeks ago, so we haven't Understood. revised the plan yet. Just want to make the comment on yeah. the record. Um, that's it. Thank you. Jack? I don't have any questions about this. I have some comments. I think that in this area at the traffic signal with the crosswalks and the church across the street, there's due cause to have sidewalks and curbs. I also know that we have an ongoing challenge in the township regarding storm drainage and runoff. And I see that this sort of subdivision um, or combining of multiple lots would typically trigger that type of evaluation. And I don't think that we should be granting a waiver for that because I think that you're not changing anything about how you're gonna use the space, but you're looking for a legal route to have less available lots for development in that area, all of which would require that type of storm drainage um, infrastructure. Um, and I think that's it, really, just the sidewalks and the storm drainage. I'm not in support of either of those waivers. Okay, thank you, Lou. No questions. David? Could you just explain what the zoning hearing board did? Is that the, the four things that are described as yes. zoning relief? Yes, the first, um, the first order is that we have to get relief because it's an existing nonconformity. And the ordinance says you can't subdivide a lot with existing nonconformities. Um, the second variance was that the two new lots will be, although less nonconforming with lot area, will still be nonconforming. Mm -hmm. So we asked for a variance or concurrence that, that they were to remain nonconforming. Um, the C is the side yard. The, there's an 18 foot, there's a building 18 foot on the westerly side of 10 Ardmore. Um, it should be 20. Uh, let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. No, no, wrong one. I 
Okay, it's, it's right along this line here. This building is only 18.1 feet, and it should be 20. You mean out here, no? I know. It's supposed to be 20. It's only 18.1. So we went. We went. It was existing. It's not changing. So we asked for that to remain. And um, lot, lot 10, or number 10, I'm sorry. Number two, when, when you combine the two lots, will no longer be non-conforming with respect to impervious cover. But lot three, even though we're still adding open space to it, will still be uh, non-conforming with regard to. So we ask for a variance to continue that non-conformity. As to impervious Impervious cover, correct. But it's going to be less non-conforming. It'll be less non-conforming, yes. Um, uh, the Township Engineers Review letter talked about possibly removing uh, some of the asphalt driveway. I, I'm guessing the asphalt driveway that used to serve the uh, Amato property from Darby Road, is that anything that you were able to discuss with your client about possibly removing that driveway entirely? Wh which driveway? The, the, uh, the one on Darby Road that used to service the, the Amato property. The one that went across the... Oh, yeah, one of, right. The one that's now in the backyard of, of the Murphys. Um, I could discuss it with them. I, I think there at some point was discussion about being able to loop in one direction and out another direction right. at some is point. That, is that continuous, those two driveways? They are not at this point in time. So you would have to somehow connect them? Yeah, right. there's, there's a grass area between the two of them right now. Okay. All right, and then... Uh, the existing shed, which used to belong to the Mottos, which now belongs to the Murphys, is only, what, three and a half feet off the back or the side property line? Correct. And I that, believe it has to be at least five feet. Yes, and that shed is actually used by the Murphys at this time, and they're, oh. they're willing to move it. They will move it so it complies with the right. setback requirements. Right. Okay. Angelo, to your, to your comment about possibly removing one of the driveways, I would argue if we're going to leave one of the driveways on Darby, the one that's currently servicing the, the, the one that currently, I guess, is used by the property owners, it's closer to the intersection. And so the ideal would be to have the driveway turning movements as far away from the intersection as possible. So I would suggest actually we eliminate the driveway curb cut that's closest to the intersection then to remove the one that's further back. You know which driveway Mr. Murphy currently uses? I don't. I'm right. The driveway that is on Darby Road is significant space. Okay. So if you were to move a driveway, would <laughs> you would tend to move the one that's there now versus the one that you're getting with this subdivision. I understand that. So, so technically, you would have to add impervious coverage to make that connection. Yeah, several feet of ground. Right. And you're already non-conforming, so you'll have to go back to the zoning board to get that approval unless you remove an equal amount of impervious from somewhere else on the property. Okay. I'm just, you know, you can't just pave that without getting some type of relief. Okay. Um, does anyone care to make a motion regarding this subdivision? Anyone? I 
would move that we recommend approval of this proposed subdivision plan, um, provided the review comments made tonight regarding the updates to the waivers, uh, the zoning hearing board, and then compliance with all outstanding engineer comments be made prior to final. And that the shed be moved on lot, is that one or two now? Okay. Uh, lot one, um, to be in compliance with the side yard setbacks for accessory structures. Okay, we have a motion. Anyone care to second it? Second. Rob seconds it. Uh, discussion on the motion? Can we just have clarification on where the commission stands about the waiver for sidewalks? Please. My motion would recommend approval of all of the all four of the requested waivers. Thank you. Uh, no discussion. Uh, Margie, call roll, please. Mr. Capuzzi. Yes. Mr. Channa. Yes. Ms. Dobbs. Yes. Mr. Fiordimondo. Mr. Garrett. No. Whoops. Yes. Mr. Montresor. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, uh, moving on to the comprehensive plan. I assume folks are here to comment or ask questions, so we'll start that process first. Start on this side of the room, since there's only three people over here. Anybody over here on this side of the room wish to address the board? No? Okay. Last row on this side. Yes, sir. Come up. Give us your name and address. Uh, and we're asking that you try to keep your comments to more or less three minutes. Um, uh, John Devine from Pan Muro, 727 Pan Muro. I really just had a question about um, our last meeting. There had been, I think what was characterized as a misprint on the map that the, uh, there was, they had noted that our neighborhood would be 0.25 acre lots, but they were 0.5 acre and the consultant who was here, I think it was a consultant, had said, oh, that's an error, we can fix that. I just wanted to make sure that that was fixed on the map, on the final plan. And we're, uh, the, the consultant is preparing a revision to the draft plan, and we haven't received it yet, but we hope to receive it okay. real quickly okay. so we can review it. So, uh, yeah, we'll make sure that that adjustment occurs, okay? okay. Thank you. Angelo, if, if I'm not mistaken, this is only uh, a suggestion essentially to the township on what could be done to the zoning ordinance, but that this won't actually change the lot size ordinance. No, I, I, unless there's a mistake on the zoning map, which should be corrected. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, next row up. Nobody? Third row from the back. Lee Molino, 2408 Half Road. Okay, now what I'm talking about is some situations of, if you don't know about the boil situation, the old mobile gas station that used to be on Half Road where Peppers was and now is a new coffee shop. That right there is an EPA fund situation. I'm not sure if that could be even be built on. And also, if you're unaware of the Exxon gas station across the street, they've been doing remediational work on constantly checking for the gas leak that they had for several years from the 93 octane gas fuel tank underground. The ground is contaminated. I'm not sure if that's a possibility to even look at and see if there's a problem with building on that because wouldn't that have a lot of remediation of digging out a lot of the ground and refilling it back in with safer uh, soil for building so I'm not sure if that would even come into the cost of this situation 
um, also about zoning is grandfathered situations of current businesses that are there, would there be any issues about the current businesses that would not sell out and such to keep them underneath the grandfather clause? I'm not sure what it goes by now, but that's one thing we're looking forward to getting some information on because there's also the EPA fund site or super fund site right by the Swiss farms. I'm not sure about the ground contamination issues. I know that they're doing remediation work with that too. So I'm not sure how even you can even build on that, especially even where the Sharrow used to be. I don't know about that situation, but there's still gas tanks underneath, underground. I'm not sure how the commission plan or comprehension plan, I mean, would even go ahead and be able to handle that situation because that would also entail dealing with the EPA. I'm not sure if that's been in the works or not. The plan doesn't contemplate any construction, so we haven't contacted the EPA as far as the comprehensive plan goes. Because I know <coughs> the me. old Boyle site is a non sellable location. If they can't so, build it, they can't build. Okay. All right. So this, this plan won't see. give them any special approvals beyond what EPA would approve. Okay. So. Would there be a further re revision on those areas that are also, I mentioned, about where the Swiss Farms is and on Haver Road also? Well, the Swiss Farms, they built on that EPA that, site. Yeah. Okay. They put the, the storage place right. there. And I know they're doing the remediation work, so they're, I'm not they're sure. They're redoing the, the uh, treatment plant. That's what they're doing there. Yeah. EPA is doing that work. Okay, so would that also not affect the situation with the comprehensive plan? No, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it will. No. Okay, so what I'm looking at is uh, I know I got the word set from the last meeting from the commissioners about uh, eminent domain. They cannot use that. That's on record from the last meeting. So, they told you that? Yeah. Great. But we are just confirming because we're looking at the long-term growth of this township. So right. we want to stay within. And I know a lot of the other businesses are potentially impacted if some do sell. And as I know, it's a one-acre situation. You can't just have less than one acre for this uh, project to go on in certain areas, correct? Uh we haven't established any guidelines for that type of development yet. That would come after the comprehensive plan is approved. If that component stays part of the comprehensive plan, then the whole set of regulations would have to be developed that would address that particular use. Okay, when would that be publicly furnished? When? I don't know. I guess the township would have to set a schedule to develop revisions to their zoning ordinance, so probably sometime next year. Okay, can that be posted on the website I'm and sure. also publicly sure it will available? Be. Angelo, if I could just sort of elaborate, any public action by the local government requires notification to all the uh, residents of the uh, township. So any action that's taken in the future will have its own separate notice. Okay, can that be mailed to, well, or would that just be on the website? We had that conversation at the last meeting. Um, I think the best is to talk to your uh, ward leaders about how to improve communication. Um, if we don't have any involvement in that. Okay, I'll talk to our ward, uh, which is your Larry Holmes. Yes. I'll go through him and see the, what we can get from there. The best thing you can do okay. is to get on his mailing list for his newsletter. Okay. And generally speaking, most commissioners have a newsletter that they publish several times a year, if not more. Okay. And they usually say what's happening in the township. So that should be a, an item of discussion in any of the commissioner's newsletters. Okay. Plus, plus, in order to affect these changes, there's all kinds of meetings and hearings that have to be held before the action can be taken on modifying a zoning ordinance or a land development ordinance. It has to be reviewed by outside agencies as well as uh, township officials. So. Okay. It's not, I mean, this process, once the comprehensive plan's done, it's going to take at least a year to modify the zoning ordinance to incorporate what the comprehensive plan okay. uh, decides. 
That's assuming that the commissioners choose to go that route. Okay. Thank you very much. Just, I'm sorry, for yes. clarification. Um, some commissioners are, you know, more active with their, you know, online newsletters than others. The best way to, you know, keep up to date would be the constant contact email that is sent out through the township. Okay. And that, that way you're not relying on, you know, individual commissioners um, and what their schedules are sending out, you know, information. Um, who is... Uh, Whose email address is headnut1 at verizon.net? Yours. Okay. That is mine. So you are signed up for constant contact and have been since 2015. Okay. I have to okay. check to see if so, it's... Um, so you've opened about 47% of them? <laughs> 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 Nothing. Um, but uh, but anyway, so just keep an eye on, the, uh, on that. Uh, okay. When you because see a I constant guess it's going into spam. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Right. So if you see a constant contact email from Hanford Township, just take, you know, take a quick okay. look. Okay. And if All it's right? not showing up... If I should re-sign up? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. All right. Thank you. Check right, if I can just... Yes. Go ahead, Jen. Oh, I just... So, just to clarify, um, you will not likely get direct notification, like a, a piece of mail, unless there's a rezoning, like a map change. If we're just looking at amending the text only and not changing the actual boundaries of the zoning map, it's unlikely you'll get a specific letter in the mail. So to kind of build off of the other things that have been said. If you just also check the agendas for the planning commission and you see there's discussion about the zoning text change or zoning map change or anything else, it will always show up on our agendas. We always encourage you to come if you have been to these and participate in the process that way. Um, so when you, when you get the emails from the township about the planning commission has a meeting scheduled, you can check what the agenda says and you can see what it is. Um, so it's unlikely that you'll be getting something in the mail to notify you. That's probably going to happen, if it does at all, closer to when things are going to change. So if you want to get in on the ground floor of those discussions, just stay abreast of what's going on with our agenda. That's the best way to participate in the discussion from the beginning. Okay, and so that'll be released on That's the website. Always so, post. Okay. Yep, our agendas are always posted on the website. You can check the calendar. The township website is updated with all of those uh, okay. regularly. Um, because uh, the last meeting, there was an issue with the nine with this date that was listed as being held, and then it showed up no meeting on the website, and then it was adjusted back. So I'm not sure, you know, we're just keeping up on the dates with that also. So with we have a, we, we post at the beginning of the year, we have scheduled meetings every other Thursday, essentially. So it's the second and fourth Thursdays, unless it's canceled for there not being enough on the agenda to, to hold a meeting. Okay. So it's very consistent, second and fourth Thursdays of the month is when the planning commission meets. Okay, that's what the whole thing with the last meeting it was a printout was brought up about the no meeting thing, so I was making sure I that don't there's know no hiccup issues that. at that point. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Okay, the commissioners, when they were up here last meeting, they already knew about it, and the thing was furnished, so they looked into it and adjusted it. I'm not sure if he knows that or not, um, but the, the meeting for tonight was not... readjusted to being held instead of it saying no meeting. Okay. Uh, so any I just IT, want to make any, sure that... Any IT... I'm a volunteer. Okay. I have no I idea. Understand. Any IT issues I would direct to the township administration. It was simply an IT mistake on a one section of the website, but other sections of the website did still have it listed and had the agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, and I want to plug, um, if, if you contact Judy Trombetta, who is the vice president of the board of commissioners, and she's also the fourth ward commissioner. Okay. She issues a, a newsletter like after every meeting almost, okay? okay, once or twice a month. If you get on her mailing list, okay, and just because you don't live in the fourth ward doesn't mean you can't be on yeah. a mailing list. She goes through a whole litany of everything the board of commissioner does, what's coming up in the coming weeks as far as meetings and things like that. So um, I live in the seventh ward, but I, I subscribe to her um, newsletter, so I, I find out things that I wouldn't otherwise know about. So okay, thank you very Judy much, Judy Trombetta. Okay, I'll okay. get in contact and wind up on that mailing list. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Can I ask a question? When we, it's not necessarily okay. about the considerations on your particular spot, but I'm 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 interested in understanding what the expectation is after the approval of this comprehensive plan 
do we expect for the township to modify the zoning ordinance and zoning map to reflect what is current or proposed in this comprehensive plan? Hypothetically, yes, that's what a comprehensive plan is supposed to do. Um, the way, so the comprehensive plan is to get an idea of what you want in the future, and then afterwards you take steps to change leg legislation or amend, you know, make amendments, add things, what have you, um, to make those things a reality. Um, whether that be, you know, uh, changes to the zoning map, changes to the text, um, changes to um, zoning classifications. Um, all of those things should be incorporated so that you're moving towards these ideals that we set forth in the plan. Does that always happen? No. But, um, but you know, sometimes it's bit by bit, sometimes it's huge changes. Um, you know, we'll kind of see where we are uh, once we get to that point. Can I ask one thing is more transparency? more transparency and updated information on that stuff be great. Right, so on, once on we get site. to that point, um, you know, we will, uh, you know, obviously be doing the same things we've been doing. Um, Just a little bit more clearer and I, outlining and I, I, you know, I, I'm sure that we'll, you know, we've, it's been brought to our attention that people have been um, you know, frustrated. You. So yeah. I'm sure that the commissioners will um, like to see, you know, different means. Um, Definitely you know, an improvement in communication and but, um, such. But yeah, so, you know. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, just Lee, Lee, the, uh, I go Lee the, um, the existing code has some procedures for, for notice of any changes to the zoning code. And in there it says, no, just to summarize, no action to amend or change this chapter shall become effective until after a public hearing in relation thereto, at which parties in interest and citizens shall have an opportunity to be heard. Okay, thank you. That's in the code itself. And okay. before that, there's provisions about when and how. That's thank you very also much. just verbatim language from the state law that requires us to do that. Okay. So, um, so yeah, there's plenty of, you know, plenty of- Now we're getting some more clarity on in that. Place. Yeah, good. so we're, we're, I mean, even this process requires a public hearing. Okay. We haven't even gotten there yet. Okay. Um, I know everybody kind of, uh, there's a lot of you know, frustration that uh, people think that they've been brought in very late in this process. We're not, we're not even in before the Board of Commissioners yet, so. Now I have a quick question, is right to know law about getting information, public comments, emailed comments and such, would that be uh, available for public to see? So the, uh, there's a right to know request application on the website. Okay. You would need to submit that to the township manager's office. If needed, we will submit that to our township solicitor to have them review for um, anything that might not be subject to the right to know uh, request. And then we produce it based on, um, you know. Okay, and that right to know is publicly available no matter what to any residents not or business. no matter what like i or, said it doesn't okay. have to, sometimes we do need to run it by the solicitor um sometimes you know if if um uh copies are requested there is a charge for copies things of that nature but that's all through the town manager's office so you okay can so contact i'll contact them, yes. them. okay uh, if you contact gloria cugini um she's the town manager's secretary she takes in all those requests and forwards them to the appropriate parties okay thank you very much mm -hmm. I think that, Angela, we are reviewing in this public forum all of the written communications that we have received. So it all has happened in this planning commission meeting. Like that's what we're doing right now. So we hear public comments and then like, like the last time we met, we spend another hour reading the comments out loud and speaking to them, even though there wasn't anybody in the audience, so. Okay, just uh, some of the emails have been sent can they be read off because yep, they really haven't doing. been read off? Yeah, that's off. what I'm saying. That's what we've been doing. We, we have been reading the emails during the meeting. Not, some of them are many, many, many pages long, so we're not reading all of them in their entirety verbatim, but we have been addressing each one of the concerns in the public meeting, as Jack said. Okay. And there's a lot Most of... Most people tend to leave I know the there's a lot, lot of point. comments. A lot of repetitive emails. comments also. So if there's something in someone's email that we've already discussed, we may not discuss it in, a, in relationship to that email, but we have discussed the same issue previously. Okay. Thank you. 
And one, one more thing, just to, again, to give you an idea of, of information that's contained in um, Judy's uh, newsletter. Um, we, we heard a lot of comments from the folks who live in the Brentford section of the township. Mm -hmm. They had concerns about traffic and pedestrian safety and things like that. So at the uh, September 12th Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, the commissioners approved the phase one of a township-wide traffic safety plan and a traffic study for, for the Brentford neighborhood uh, in the amount of $35,000. So a lot of the comments we got from the Brentford section re, uh, regarding those two issues, it seems as though the commissioners are kind of putting that on the forefront and it's starting to address that. Okay. Thank you. Look. Thank you very much. Anyone else? John Devine from Pamir Road again. Um, I don't, if this is redundant, I apologize. Did the question of billboards come up at all? Because uh, if uh, we, I would just want to say that we hope that the comprehensive plan would address that and the, the uh, uh, if that would be an eyesore at all. Because I know there was a case of some billboards that wanted to go up on Lancaster Avenue. And uh, again, I apologize if that's uh, redundant. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone? Oh, yes, ma'am. Sir, ma'am. Hello. Hi. I'm Mech Wagner. I live on Rosewood Lane. So Rosewood comes down the hill into Winfield. So uh, reading through this thing, there's a 100-year floodplain and a 500-year floodplain. Plain, sorry. And um, I've lived here for, it'll be 30 years in November, and there's been three floods. So if one was 100, and that's the end of that, and one was a 500, and that's the end of that, then was the third one, the 100, starting over again? And so there will be no more floods a, a hundred, forever, no. because this area, um, just traveling it, when it rains hard, and we spoke to the people along Haverford Road, they have these dams that they put in their doorway. Because when you drive along there, just like when you drive along um, Eagle Road, you have to go into the turn lane because otherwise you will splash up on, you know, and that's what the gentleman from the golf shop said, you know, it's, it's more that the road is full and it splashes up into his building. But, I mean, there's very little addressed with the floodplain. It's just like it exists. And sorry, we're yeah, going to well, do the, this. The, and the, it's, it's a bowl, you know. Windward uh, is up and it comes down and all the rain is there. Uh, the floodplain exists. It's based upon calculations performed usually by the Corps of Engineers or one of their consultants, okay? Um, a hundred-year storm does not mean it occurs once in a hundred years. A hundred-year storm means that there's a 1% chance that it could occur in any given year. So you could have a hundred-year storm five years in a row. It's a st st statistic. It's not a time frame, okay? So a 500-year storm would have half a percent chance of occurring in any year, okay? But the fact that it occurs more often than 100 years has nothing to do with the fact that it's a 100-year storm. But the fact that there's been three... That's because there's a lot of rain. I mean, so, I, I can't, I mean, and you know... And potentially there will continue to be a lot of There's only a certain rain. amount of water in the world, okay? And it goes up in the sky and comes down as rain, okay? And most of it comes on Winfield. And, and I know that the township grade. is currently in the process of doing a, a third or fourth study of the floodplain along Winfield Drive, okay? That's in the process of being done right now. And I think they just modified that contract to include additional surveys and information. So, but unfortunately, there's not much you can do in certain situations because you have a railroad on one side you have houses on the other, and there's no place for the water to go. There's there's things that people can do to protect their homes, but short of moving everybody out of their homes or something like that, 
those houses will probably be flooded every time there's a heavy rain. But there are uh, measures that individual property owners can take to protect their property, and, and some of them put in gates to keep the water out of their property. just seems like there's not much in here, just a casual no, we, mention. We, the township has a very strict ordinance regarding new development in floodplains. So we don't allow anybody to build in floodplains to make the situation worse, but we certainly can't go in and tell everybody to move out of the floodplain. That would be too disruptive to the township. Was that put into effect after Dogwood Lane? After Do I'm not familiar with Dogwood Lane. That's on the other side of Eagle? right there um, against Darby Creek. Right. There's four houses. Those, those houses should not be in the floodplain. They were built, what, 30 years ago? Mm, they were built since I've been there, so. No. I mean, you know, they were built I mean, after I, mean, I got Do you know, there. Chuck, if those houses are in the floodplain? I don't believe they are. Okay. Yeah. I believe that they're above that floodplain, 100 year floodplain elevation. Floodplain regulations went in effect, I think, in 1972 or thereabouts. So they've been around for 50 years. That's the federal floodplain regulations. The township adopted regulations after that, but it was before, I'm pretty sure it was before Dogwood Lane was built. 72 is before, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. If I recall, Dogwood Lane was developed in the 80s. Um, our much more strict floodplain ordinances didn't come into effect until probably later in the 90s. Um, so while there were floodplain ordinances at that time, they are what they are now, um, which really you know further restricts development and helps regulate the floodplain areas. But wasn't the original plan for Dogwood Lane to build a bridge across Cobbs Creek and develop ground on the other side of the creek? Well, now you're way predating me, okay. Angela, so I don't know. Anyone else? Yes, please. Hi, Jane Hall, 161 Golfview Road. I'd like to thank you for indulging me last time. I got a little bit worked up for the evening, so I appreciate it. And I think I uh, kind of cut off my predecessor, and she sent me some questions for you for tonight, Christina Haas, and she lives on uh, Shawnee Road. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can answer most of them, but I did ask, I did tell her that I would come and speak to you and ask these questions. I would like to just say for one moment to the woman that just spoke, I am a realtor uh, here and um, the floodplains have changed through the years. Uh, the federal floodplains have had to change because of the overabundance of, of rain and, and flooding that we've seen through the past. There are properties over in Northside Bryn Mawr that were built in the 20s that were very high elevations that are now in a floodplain, uh, only sections of them, but sections of them there are. And so people can't put additions on and things like that. Um, so it does change over time, and the townships do try to adopt and, and adapt for that, but it is difficult. And some things were built, as Kelly said, prior to. So it's it's terrible. I mean, you know, I live right by the creek, and, and we flood all the time as well. Um, so this is sent from Christina Haas, who's the head of the Marion Golf Manor Neighborhood Association. And I do apologize because I think a little bit of his repetitious, but I, I just wanted to ask because I know she was addressing you last time and I, I think things got a little bit confusing. So she asked, what advantages do, um, does the planning board see to allow for residential development along Halford Road? What thought and consideration have they given to the existing residents in surrounding neighborhoods? Question number one. She's referring to the proposal to have a yes. combined or mixed use along yes. Haverford Road. Yes. Okay. Um, we haven't studied that in any detail. Okay. okay. It's a concept for now. Right. Okay. Uh, but the thought is it's it's adjacent to the uh, train stations along the P&W. Yes. It would be ideal use 
of, of uh, encouraging people to take transit to work, okay? Right. Um, but I will say that any type of development that would occur along those lines would be subject to whatever new regulations are developed for that type of development. Right. And so parking and traffic would be yes, addressed studies. as part of that um, set of regulations. Right. Okay. Um, and, and I thought that to be the case, and she actually does ask about SEPTA. Um, number two, and I, I believe you were in the midst, and I forget, forgive me, I forget your name, Maggie. I, I believe that you were kind of in discussion with Christina um, last time, last month. Why does the plan need to classify the housing as affordable housing, as I talked to you, Kelly? And does it allow for low-income housing via that classification? And hoping that there is an intentional, intentionality slash advantage to classifying as affordable rather than an open-ended residential classification and not just that the township is required to offer it. Don't we already have that? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> I can reread it, but I, I know there's a lot in that question. So there's a couple like value judgments there. So yeah. I can speak to it more just from a as a planning professional and kind of what okay. that means to me, but in terms of including it in the comprehensive plan, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I, I didn't write the comprehensive plan. I don't take ownership of what the comprehensive plan says. Oh, sure. So I don't want to interpret that question as me of like course, explaining I understand the, what you the yeah. comprehensive plan's approach to it, but from a, from a planning perspective, um, there's fair share housing Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that every municipality in the state has to accept some form of fair, fair share, meaning that you have to have a mix of housing types within your township. Right. You can't just have only single family detached or only apartments. Um, and so allowing for the, the, that mix of uses, um, we started getting into the conversation about yeah. affordable housing being 30% of the, of an, an, an household income. Right. So what's, what would be affordable housing for some people is unattainable for some. Um, and so having different housing types, we were also talking about kind of the value and cost of homes, you know, for new construction versus older homes and just right. increasing the supply of homes just inherently makes things more affordable because you have more choice. Of course. Um, so I don't know if there was anything more specific that she was looking for. Uh, let me just go to her next question. I'm just taking a note here real quick to, on my phone so that I can address it tomorrow with her. Um, cause I can answer these via email for her. Um, number three, have the board, has the board considered leaving the zoning on Haverford road as is at, which would be pure commercial with instituting some aesthetic improvements. Walkability seems much more palatable to residents and business owners, given the feedback we have heard. I do think that we talked about that last time. We mentioned that the, the, design development or design regulations would include some type of requirement for, for sidewalks and green space along the Haverford Road corridor. But uh, as it stands as is, there's no requirement to do that and there's no motivation for the businesses to offer that. There certainly isn't any right of way available that I'm aware of that the township could take advantage of. So, you need to build sidewalks. Right. Yeah or to create a green space, a, a, a grass strip where you can plant trees or something like that, it's it's not available. So the only way it could happen uh, to make that area more accessible and mm -hmm. pedestrian friendly would be a new set of regulations regarding that area. But again, oh. as, as we've said many times, yeah. it won't happen unless the people along right. that strip decide they want to do it. Okay. What was the gist of of what um, is Christina Hunt? Christina Haas. What was the gist of Christina's uh, suggestion for Haverford Road? Well, I, you're I, saying leave it, leave the zoning as leave is. the zoning as is, and and I think that. And then there was more in there that I didn't quite. Yeah, let follow. me see. Um, has the board considered leaving the zoning as is on Haverford Road as pure commercial, with instituting some aesthetic improvements such as walkability, which we were just discussing seems much more palatable to residents and business owners given the feedback i have not heard the feedback i'm getting um you know the questions from the neighborhood association from what they have but i'm not 
out as much as I used to be. <laughs> Another story. Um, so I think that we addressed that one. Then it says, what has the zoning board, and this is a different question that I can probably answer for her, um, but I will ask, has the zoning board identified or estimated in terms of potential impact to the public schooling capacity? Have they studied the impact, unintended consequences within the models, examples that you noted last time, such as King Street in Malvern? Uh, seems we should be capitalizing on learning of those who have undergone similar changes. Um, and I will just add for my own comment, I ha I'm very familiar with King Street. And um, I'm sure that they experienced the same struggle to get that accomplished there with the surrounding neighborhoods because it is a very um, charming, actually remind you of Havertown, that little area there. So her question is, you know, have we done the um, impact studies? That would be done later. So I'll tell her that. Uh, yes. Uh um, I would imagine some type of impact study would be required as part of the yeah. development regulations. Exactly. Right. Do that, developers that question started sure. out with the zoning board. Yeah, so she, she was asking what has the zoning board identified as estimated. I, I think she meant the planning commission. The planning commission, and, and I, I think like what I was trying to explain last time with a little bit of um, fire was uh, it's, a, and I will explain this in the email to the um, neighborhood association that, you know, there are, there's this preliminary step, and then you go to the next step. Um, it goes to the Board of Commission. I'll, I'll try to put that into a sequence of events for them. Um, the, do the developers need to notify the township if intending to build low-income housing, and do we as township residents have the right to approve or reject that? I think I know the answer to that, too, but I will let you answer. I, I don't know the answer other than what Kelly explained last time. Right that the township has no control over low-income housing. That's between the property owner and the federal government. Right. So as far as the township having to approve that, I would say no, they don't have to approve it. Right. And I don't know that they can prohibit it either. They cannot. So yeah, the only review, so any, any sort of development would have to come through the land development process. Right. So in terms of though, how it's financed or what rent caps they have, or if, if they're, right. you know, under any sort of federal housing program or not, that's irrelevant to the zoning matter. Right. So as long as they meet all of the bulk and density requirements of the zoning code and follow all of the SALDO standards for land development, then the township is obligated to approve the plan. And then any sort of financing or you know, residency of then the people who would end up living in whatever gets built, right. that's not something that the township can can regulate. Can involved in exactly. legally. Right. At, yeah. Legally. I, I understand that. Okay. I, and I, I can put this forth. I just need to ask the question so that I, I'm making sure that I'm getting everything accurate. The last one is public transit use is down by substantial over the last two to three years, particularly, particularly the high speed line. Is the public transit appeal diminishing for high speed line? It seems like we're um, looking backward as the plan is today. I have stats on ridership. I would just add that I do believe that it will all come back. It's just going to take time. So, and I will welcome your comments on that as well. Um, yeah, personally, I agree with you. I don't think that we're going to stay in this mode that we are forever. At some point in time, people are going to go back to work. They're going to go to Philadelphia and work in their office buildings. I. Yeah. But that's, that's my opinion. I don't know. We could have another uh, variant come out and, and we start all over again. Who knows? Well, Comcast did just require all their employees to come back to the office, which is a Three couple days a thousand week. extra people commuting back into the city. So I think that this is still in the, the COVID bubble. Um, yeah. I think ridership will, will increase again. I do too. And, yeah. I, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I met with someone from Comcast yesterday and they are requiring them to go back. And I know that my kids are required to go back now at least three days a week. So I believe that to be the case as well. I don't think that's pretty much um, what they have so far, but I, I do, uh, the Marion Gulf Manor Neighborhood Association, they, they are uh, with Merwood Civic, they do come together and do have questions. So I've encouraged them to come to the Board of Commissioners meeting and also come and sit through a zoning hearing board. I think it's um, helpful, but I appreciate your time. Thank you for answering the questions, and I will send out an email. Thank you. Thanks.
All right, last call. Anyone else? Okay. Um, since you're here, um, we were going to discuss the comprehensive plan among ourselves tonight. Unfortunately, we can't do that because um, we're still waiting for a revised draft from our consultant. So we're going to have to push that discussion back for a little bit um, so that we have time to look at the revised draft before we start making our comments and recommendations. Um, we have two meetings coming up in October. One is October 13th and the other is October 27th. So uh, I wanted to get a, a sense from the uh, board members here tonight, which of those two dates would you prefer to have our official discussions regarding our comments and recommendations to the Board of Commissioners. I personally am not available on the 13th. I'll be out of town, and I know uh, Julia is not sure whether or not she could be here or not on the 13th. So if you decide you want to do it on the 13th, then the five of you can plug along. Otherwise, we can wait till the 27th, or hopefully we'll have a full board. I will not be here on the 27th. Okay. So now it's a popularity contest. <laughs> I think we should I, I, continue to meet, but I think more importantly, we need the revised draft. Right, and and I've been promised that it would be out today, so hopefully that means tomorrow or Monday. <laughs> uh, but if we if we don't get it till Monday, I just think the twenty seventh, no offense, would be a better date because that would give us a little more time to look at it ourselves. So if that's okay with, with you guys, I know Maggie won't be bashful as far as letting us know what she feels. I will share feels. her comment that you can read out loud. You just won't be here to muffle my opinion, that's all. <laughs> uh, will there be annotations on the revised draft? <laughs> we can go page by page. <laughs> I can certainly provide that. No, I live stream from abroad and <laughs> comment on Angela's comments. No, just <laughs> In which language? Portuguese. Portuguese. Nice. Okay, so it looks like we're not going to do anything official until the 27th of October, okay? So um, you're all welcome to come back then and listen to us fight among ourselves, or not fight, but discuss among ourselves. And um, I, I don't think, other than the comp plan, that there's anything else that we would have on the agenda for the 13th, so we may not even have a meeting on the 13th, but that's that's up to the township to decide whether or not there's a, enough agenda items to convene on the 13th. But it looks as though the 27th is the magic date now. And I apologize for you folks who came out today hoping to hear us talk, but we're still going to talk. So you're welcome to stay. May I uh, recommend to the Neighborhood Association that they still have the ability to send a letter to you? Is that okay, or are we past that date? I, I think we uh, we passed that date, but you know what? Why don't you send it if they can I'll get it to all us? The questions tomorrow. You know, don't send it to us on the twenty sixth. Oh no no no. no, no! I would have them do it by you know first of next week. Okay, yeah. yeah so that I they mean, could get can... it submitted. Do you want me to send it to Kelly? Yeah, send it to Kelly, and she can distribute it to okay. us. Okay, I'll send it to you, Kelly, and, and that way they can have some time to organize their thoughts. I'll I'll answer the questions in the interim. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Dari Dowdy, 2417 Rosewood Lane. When the revision uh, does come out, is that going to be available for those of us to? It'll be posted on the website. Will it? Okay. Yes, it will. So keep looking back. Can... Checking your website. Yep. Okay. What, and it's going to be called? It may the... not be in a newsletter, but it'll be on the website. All right. Then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, all right. Where's everybody going? Um, Thanks for when, coming out, folks. When, when, the, when we have the new draft up on the website, I'll ask the township manager to send out a new constant contact email to let everybody know, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay, Dr. Dr. John. Can we ask the township manager to put it in the next newsletter that the comprehensive plan revision has been issued? Uh, we uh, actually, the mm, articles for the newsletter uh, have a deadline, I think, of October 7th. Oh, thank you for knowing that. Uh, I didn't know off the top of my head. So uh, we are planning on putting something in the newsletter um, yeah, my with I'll things kind of being up in the air and a little <laughs> fluid with dates. I, We're a little I, bit more hesitant to add specific dates um, in the newsletter, but obviously we'll right. direct people back to the website. But, uh, uh, I, have, I have some suggested absolutely no uh, but I'll send it to you. So heard. You make sure. Kelly, I'm sure the commissioners keep up with these things. I'm sure. Yes, it, it is discussed. It might be helpful to have an Try email to, to the not giving them the plan, but saying the plan is now on the website. Here's the link. Yeah, I have to. Please uh, keep your constituents up to date. Right. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, some commissioners some will, are really active with their yeah, email newsletters. Some I, aren't. It's um, our 50th wedding anniversary. So we uh, need Obviously, the ones that are very active six will, I'm ago. absolutely certain, will have it out to everybody before I even blink an eye. <laughs> Maybe a little one, two sentences about the importance of it, and then they can just cut and paste and send it to their. Sure. No, their wait. List. I, 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 absolutely. Yep. Some people check email. Is there? Well, we'll, we'll do that now. Okay. Uh, I did want to point out, though, that there are three different newsletters that the township published that spoke to the comprehensive plan. One was in the spring of 2019, one was in the winter of 2019, 2020, and the third was in the winter of 2021, where they discussed the comprehensive plan. So it wasn't ready to take it out to what I think are most of the residents. All right, so they we did have, I think, three pieces of correspondence that we didn't get a chance to look at last time. You suggested that we look at them before tonight. Mm -hmm. Maggie, do you remember which three they were? I, I have a package here from last time that begins with uh, Garcia D. Giovanni. You guys have that? No? Lou? They were, they were hard copies that Kelly handed out last time. And I think Dorothea was here in person, and I think we discussed with her. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll we'll do all of them, and if anything rings a bell with anybody, then let me know. All right, so Dorothea kind of doesn't believe that we uh, need to uh, make adjustments to Eagle Road Carter, I guess, which would imply that she agrees that half of her road should stay as is. She feels that it's better to have small businesses than big businesses. So um, this goes Uh, basically to the concept that we're proposing for those two carters. I think we've had several people comment on that already. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is from Louise Cecciarelli. And um, I guess she's her concerns are increase in population and, and in traffic. Um, and again, I think any type of improvements that we, or any type of development that we would recommend for the Carters would um, be subject to uh, requirements regarding parking and uh, stormwater management and it, any other type of traffic or impact studies that would address the issues that normally arise out of new development. We 
okay? All right. Tom Kelly was here last time, and I think he, he spoke to the idea of having some type of venue for outdoor events. Um, and I think I mentioned to him maybe that uh, town center between the two branches of Darby Road could serve as that. And I don't know that he was uh, thought that that would be sufficient space or, or what. But anyhow, um, uh, development such as that would require space. And I don't know necessarily where that space would would be available. Oh, the, I guess the other place would be the Brookline School. But I don't know that the township commissioners are in favor of that type of development for Brookline School. He mentioned the creek, but I thought the idea was to have things more. He did, you're right. And then he said maybe the creek wouldn't work because of the acoustics, but um, isn't the idea to have it more central to the yeah. town? Yeah, you, you would hope, yeah. But I, I think the creek is it's not central to the township, but it does get quite a bit of traffic, probably more so for the dog maybe than anything else, but that's besides the point. I, I don't know that there's any ground available on the correct property where you're not running into wooded areas or steep slope. So it would be an expensive proposition to develop, do any more development over there. I still think it's a valuable suggestion though that if there's an opportunity for something like this that it be developed. So I don't know that we have to necessarily pinpoint a location in the township through the comprehensive plan, but just say this would be like a really nice um, amenity for the community to have, you know, provided that it meets the criteria for, you know, access and parking and acoustics and whatever other considerations are important for an outdoor music venue. Yeah, and afterwards when he, he actually came up and spoke to a couple of us, he also included like dance and some of the other forms of art. So it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to just acoustic performances. But I do think that it would be good to keep it generalized, but in the plan, and then maybe the Parks and Rec plan can look at it in more detail. Uh, yeah, the Parks and Rec's uh, comprehensive plan, if you want to call it that, would be, uh, I think that might be a, a, a good location for additional studies to, to focus on this type of use. Yeah, that had been my thinking because I, I agree with how Maggie described what should be in the comprehensive plan and that would allow for some creative brainstorming like pop-up or mobile um, event um, structures for different parks throughout the township. Uh, moving on to Gwen Land. Um, and I, I, she, she talks about pedestrians, and, and I think the fact that the township is starting to recognize that pedestrians have some rights in this township, and they're, they're doing a, they started phase one of a township-wide pedestrian safety plan. I think that goes a long way to at least get started on her concerns about pedestrians and and uh, hopefully that study will get some airtime with with residents that they'll be able to uh, comment on the plan and it's not st strictly a consultant going out there and making his recommendations that if there's some type of public input on that do we know is that going to be something that drops it's in our laps and that's what it is so i could not tell you okay I And then she talks about lighting, and then the township just replaced all their street lights with LED lights. Uh, I do believe that most of them were. I think that there is further upgrades being done to those street lights to make them solar. Um, make them what? Solar. Solar. solar oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I thought I remembered seeing a sample product in the comprehensive plan that alluded to the fact that they were recommending solar going forward. But I might be misremembering. Okay, so the, the comprehensive plan does address that issue? I thought it did. 
unless I'm getting it confused with another project. But when I read through it the next time, I'll make sure to make a note and then we can okay. review. By the way, what department does handle that? What, the pedestrian yeah. uh, study? Well, generally, the Office of Community Development, but the Township Manager's Office has um, the one. Uh, An ad hoc? Uh, well, the Township Manager's Office um, oh. has been working with the commissioners directly with that study. Gotcha. Sarah McCafferty. Uh, I think um, she's looking at recreational facilities, a splash park and a swimming pool. Um, I think the towns have already uh, made a decision on a public swimming pool. Uh, I guess they, there was an opportunity to do it as part of the Hafford Reserve, but they deferred or decided not to do it there and, and approved the YMCA. And there is, isn't there a splash park over at Freedom Park? Isn't there some type of device or? Freedom Playground just has some misters, and there's misters. only like one or two nozzles, and they're not turned on very frequently. Okay. A splash pad is quite different than that. Um, there was some consideration of doing that, um, and the Skadium Plaza out front. Um, I do believe that plan had been scrapped. Um, but as far as the swimming pool, um, there is there was an agreement, like a non-compete kind of clause uh, with our agreement with the YMCA that the township would not build a swimming pool uh, or public pool um, for a number of years. I don't recall exactly how long it was. Okay, but but regardless, those items would would be something that might come up in the rec study that that's being done. That that would probably be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Vic Berg, uh, I think he's confusing what we're proposing for the Eagle Road and Heifer Road corridors versus what we tried 10 years ago. I think it's a completely different plan. And, and as far as traffic and everything else, uh, that hopefully will be addressed by the development regulations that are adopted. That concept is moved forward. And finally, Matt Phelan, who is uh, focusing on the Haverford Road Carter. And he, he believes that uh, single story new structures are preferred. No drive through, I think. I'm okay with that. And he doesn't like big box development. And he's opposed to residential apartments or condos because of the traffic and parking issues. And I think um, we've pretty much gone through most of his concerns. Um, and again, it all depends on whether or not the plan moves forward with those types of recommendations included for the Haverford Road corridor and any road corridors. Anyone else care to say anything? Nope. Okay. All right. Um, so, who? You do? Who do you have? Oh, okay. Why don't you go through those? I don't have those. Oh. All right. So, is Steve. Stephen. Um. Oh, I think we did it. Did we do this already? Yep. Oh. Oh, yeah, who we did that time, Andrew. Okay. Yes. And Stephen Treppy. Yeah, we talked about theirs okay. last time. All right, very good. Okay. Thank you. So, all the written correspondence we've looked at, and we will take their comments into consideration when we, when we create or draft our recommendations to the Board of Commissioners. The only other piece of information or correspondence that we'll receive would be whatever, is it the Marion Off Civic Association or that neighborhood? Yeah, what, uh, Off Manor? 
Okay. Whatever correspondence they forward to us, we'll, we'll give that consideration as we have with all the other correspondence. But that's the only piece that we have outstanding, I think. Angelo, I'd like to make a brief observation. Um, we're obviously going to be trying to work toward consensus. It is the case in that situation that it, that it never will be that everyone is satisfied. And I want to highlight the fact that for many, many points, we have equal support for that and diametrically opposed views for that. And so, by definition, some people will not be satisfied. Hopefully, however, if they're following the process and um, understand how the soup gets made, they will come away with the notion that, okay, on balance, the whole thing makes sense and it's a positive step forward. Hopefully, we can deliver on that. Um, you're right. We're not all going to agree on what, what the recommendations should be. So we can do it. One way we can do it is we can get a consensus on each recommendation, you know, one by one, and just take a, a straw poll up here with, you know, I make a recommendation, we do this, and five agree and two don't agree, then it, it gets put in. You know, I make a recommendation and six of you don't agree with me, then fine, it doesn't get put in. That's that's the fairest way to do it, I guess. Okay, we get a consensus amongst all of us as to what actually ends up being forwarded to the Board of Commissioners. Okay, and we may have some four to three votes and that's the way it goes. Actually, let me clarify, while your response is spot on and that that's what we'll be contending with, I was actually trying to um, bring to the consciousness of all the members of our community that's what's coming down the road. Um, the input process is one of advocacy where people are advocating for their different points. Now, when we go to make the soup, it's got to shift to what makes the most sense for, for the community. But again, you're right. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do tonight also is, and I don't know if you guys are ready to do this, but we'll give it a shot. If you could uh, say list three issues or or items that that you have a strong feeling towards as far as what changes need to be made in the draft plan, just like a bullet point on you know I don't like this or I like that. If everybody could just mention that. Um, at least to give us a head start on what we're going to be doing in a month. And uh, I know it might be unfair to put you guys on the spot like that, but I just thought it might be a good idea so that we, we start thinking about what other people are thinking as far as the board's concerned. That, I mean, uh, one thing that comes to mind immediately. Wait, wait a minute. Is this one of your things? Yeah. Okay. Three. You, you just three, asked. Jack. Three. Three minutes. Go ahead. When we're talking about these corridors that were identified long ago as sensitive corridors, like the Eagle Road corridor or the Haverford Road corridor, and we're incorporating some proposed revisions in this, I feel like we might be jumping to drawing something and writing what might be a zoning ordinance language. Um, and it occurs to me that maybe there should be uh, outside of the comprehensive plan and maybe um, driven by the comprehensive plans guidelines, um, actually an intensive master planning of those actual activities, um, looking at the Eagle Road corridor and actually drawing where would we put curbs and sidewalks and parking and what would be ideal, you know, parking garages or larger buildings in that corridor and how would they work with the existing streets and whatnot? That seems like the kind of develop, design development that needs to happen in order to get a developer to really look at this. Um, and what we've put in here 
really just kind of inflames the current occupants of those um, properties. That is, that's kind of the gist that I'm getting. And I think that kind of also applies at Haverford Road. Like, I'd like to see a conceptual um, sketch of what a development looks like. Um, and so, but I, I guess that's not necessarily something that should be in the comprehensive plan or it should be a comprehensive plan focus on those corridors, but a lot of effort needs to go into that in order to get there. All right, so bottom line, are you are you saying you're not in favor of the concept for Eagle Road and Everford Road? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. I'm not saying well, that at all. Then, then what you're suggesting will come, okay? And I don't think it's the township's place to do that. I mean, if the township owned that property, I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. But the township owns, doesn't own that ground, ground. So I don't think it's appropriate for the township to suggest some type of development so that developers can look at it and say, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Okay. It still is going to come down to, uh, and I look at the, what was done in Middletown Township uh, where the old Franklin Mint used to be. Okay. And the township didn't do anything as far as developing concepts for that piece of ground. Developers did it and they, they spent a lot of money doing it and they lost a lot of money developing those concepts because they went through four or five different concepts. Okay, so I don't know that it's imperative upon us to do something like that. What's, what we need to do is develop a set of regulations that as a township we're comfortable with if that plan gets implemented. I'm only thinking about what an, a presentation I saw of the um, city of Philadelphia's planning department and the comprehensive plan that they issued for I think a corridor on Broad Street in North Philly where they um, took a space that was not well developed and it was kind of run down and they allocated um, bike lanes and traffic patterns and um, planter boxes and sidewalks and they put this profile of the public right away out there and said this is what it's going to be when this area gets developed and that set guidelines for developers coming in knowing this is what the town sh the city expected the public right away to be after that got redeveloped so that's kind of where i'm coming from maybe not necessarily telling somebody that this needs to be a three-story building with parking in these spaces but looking at the public right of way and how do we want the public pedestrians and vehicular traffic to get through there and how do we landscape that it seems to me like we could help guide that process a little bit and, more and and i think that's beyond the scope of the comprehensive plan i think the comprehend comprehensive plan sets up the the concept and the objectives but it doesn't give the detail yeah, and i'm not and that's i think where i'm saying that i don't know that it necessarily should be part of the comprehensive plan now but this should say that that needs to happen um, in parallel with zoning developments that allow developers to come in and redevelop those properties. Okay. But that's Anything just else? my two cents. No, that's, that's just that's, the first that's, one. That's the first one. Okay. You got another the second one? Uh, come back to me. Let's go all the way around. <laughs> okay, Lou. And I, again, I'm not looking to start a discussion on this. I just want uh, like a bullet point of what you what, what you're thinking, what's in the back of your mind, and how it how it develops beyond that will be discussed in more detail next time. I really focus on process and structure first, then comes the content, because if you don't have it delivered in a workable tool, it's not very usable. And so that's why I've really been laying back, waiting for the revised plan in the hope that the document would be much more accessible um, and then um, presented in a way that people can easily use as a reference in whatever capacity. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I'm not as deeply enmeshed as you or, say, Maggie in these things. I know some enough to be dangerous, but I feel like other than the focal point of a town center and the economic corridors, it's not really clear to me um, 
what the priorities are. It's it, 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 when I read this, it seems like different people could take away different views. And so I'm still stuck at what is really at the heart here that we're trying to prioritize. I personally think that the township overall does need to look toward the future in all the different ways to harden the township against climate change. And I don't mean to use that word so big and vast, but all the different impacts that are happening now as in the present times. Um, and then um, certainly uh, the ability for people to move around the community more safely and, and, and easily. Those are the things that really pop in my mind. Good. Okay. Great. David? I had concerns. Oops. I had concerns about not just the forum, but, but, but the content in terms of how it approached the township. But I'll hold off on those comments until um, until we see the revised version. Um, I, I think, in, well, in terms of the major focus being the town center, that's, that's the key to the plan. I, I would like to see more um, kind of a f fuller explanation of, of why that's being done and kind of a, not necessarily more detailed but um, clearer in terms of objectives and the reasons for those objectives. My biggest concern, my, my own big concern, is in terms of drafting, in terms of the, the initial draft, is that much of it is in the form of um, it is recommended that, or yes, it, recommendations that are the planner's recommendations. But if it's adopted, those all become the township recommendations. And, and I think that's not what the plan should be doing. Every idea that the planner or the committee had, the ad hoc committee, is not the township plan. Township might want, it might be, uh, we want to accomplish something and he's, here are things we should consider at the township. That seems appropriate. But to say it is recommended that we uh, change, you know, the zoning. Was, well, a lot of it is the zoning. Uh, assuming that all comes out, there's still a lot of things that say, well, it's recommended that we you know, put um, such and such uses, change such, certain uses in the neighborhoods, and that's that's the planner or the ad hoc committee or the. Um, the steering committee's recommendation, but that shouldn't be in there as the planning, as the township recommendation. Again, the township might want to consider those possibilities, but they, they shouldn't be adopting the bulk of the, of the draft, to me, was recommendations to the township. Um, yeah, it was number three of what I submitted. Yeah, it reads as an advisory report to the township rather than a statement of policies, goals, objectives, and strategies of and by the township. And I think that's led to uh, many of the comments that, and objections that we've gotten. Um, I also feel that although the plan need not, the intent, I, as I understand it, is not to do um, what the 1988 uh, plan did, which is get deeply into each of the neighborhoods. But I think general pr provisions about protecting residential neighborhoods could be much stronger. Okay. Some specifics on that, or we don't have to go into now. My own personal, I have two more personal things. One is uh, something against light pollution, which made clear that the township is committed to um, among the kinds of pollution we don't want is more light pollution. And finally, I, I think um, the general thought I had was uh, instead of the plan being put in a drawer and looked at every so often, that there be a commitment probably by this body or by the commissioners to delegate a body, most likely us, 
to periodically review the progress and see how we're doing. Okay. In implementation. Great. Uh, I have three issues that I think need to be addressed in the comp plan. First is infill development. I think we need to have some type of recommendation or goal to try to develop some type of uh, design standards that protects the integrity and character of existing established neighborhoods. Uh, the second item has to do with open space and uh, developing regulations which um, are more enforceable and uh, uh, and apply to all land developments and subdivisions except those that may have already complied with the current requirements for open space or fees in lieu of. And then the third item has to do with uh, evaluating impacts to existing neighborhoods from that are adjacent to institutional and commercial uses and any adverse impacts that may be created by overflow parking in those neighborhoods. I think the township needs to do, uh, uh, should do a better job as far as protecting those neighborhoods from those overflow parking situations. Julia? The sustainable design section and really take a look at what belongs in the compre have a comprehensive plan. Review the level of specifics that we're getting into in the comprehensive plan and just sort of go through, like I have a longer list, but I won't go through the whole thing. But it would basically be to make it stronger and more enforceable, but also more specific to land development. And there were some items listed that really didn't belong in there, and I think that we could take that space and the energy used to sort of copy what our wonderful environmental advisory board is doing and really take a look at how it pertains to development, neighborhoods, and commercial properties. Um, my second one is the same as yours with um, subdivisions and protecting the character of older neighborhoods. And then the third one was very much just to take a deep dive into the Eagle Road corridor and the town center concepts. And again, sort of debate what should and shouldn't be in the comprehensive plan and maybe come to a better idea of what that would envision in the future. But it was very similar to what Jack was saying about sort of kind of defining the principles. And a lot of them are probably similar principles to what would be in the sustainable design section and some of the stuff that would make it more environmentally friendly and deal with the stormwater runoff in a sustainable way with planters and open space, which is really set up more guidelines in some aspects, but less guidelines in other aspects. That makes sense. OK. Thank you. Rob? I share some of the other um, comments that uh, other people had made regarding the Eagle Road corridor in that I think it's what Hav Havertown is all about. Uh, it says something about the community and how to move forward with that is, has to be addressed because it's a, and I see it as an extremely complex problem in that there are many issues such as traffic. And if it does develop in the future, how do you control what happens on that Eagle Road corridor? Um, the other issue that I have is developing a town center that is linked to that Eagle Road corridor in that I see it as a cohesive effort to pull that all together, uh, which is going to be, again, I see it as something as a, a very difficult task to do. But 
it's not impossible. And I think it would require expertise outside of what we're doing, such as there were discussions about a parking lot. There were discussions about possibly taking uh, areas that are in that triangle where the old municipal building was, utilizing that. I'm, I know I'm talking in more specifics, but I can't help it. It's, it's something that I, I can visualize, but I don't think it's the best route to go. That's why I'm thinking of it being something that has to be looked at in terms of a professional's uh, alternatives. Now, let's see what happens if we put, for example, the parking lot here, or let's see if we move this here, or the, the corner property at Eagle Road in Manoa that went, the bank was going on to. What an ideal spot for a town center to probably start. Uh, and then the last was the same as yours uh, in terms of subdivisions and land develop, development and maintaining neighbors, neighborhoods. Um, I had thought that after this comprehensive plan is somewhat developed to minimize the amount of area that can be made legally as a singular, single family lot. You had mentioned before uh, that there's a large lot that can be subdivided into two smaller lots. But I think somehow zoning should imply that it's got to reflect a percentage of the surrounding uh, properties. You can't just cut it in half and say it works. It was just a thought, a thought that I had as far as how that could be looked at. Okay. Uh, that's it? Okay. Do you have any thoughts, Maggie? I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> of course I have thoughts, Angelo. That's a silly question. Um, no, but I, I think everyone has um, very well defined a lot of the things that I would agree with. Um, certainly, um, you know, when we look at the things that have been coming before us, as being primary concerns, the maintaining the community character. I'm glad a couple of people brought that up because I, I would definitely agree with that. I think though my comments for the comp plan in particular are gonna be more um, procedural than, than content. Not that I don't have thoughts about the various implementation recommendations that are made in the plan, but I think generally speaking, um, the reason for a comprehensive plan is to articulate the, the goals and the policies that we need to adopt um, to achieve our aims moving forward, but also from a practical perspective, a comprehensive plan is your grant making document. If you identify a plan in the comprehensive plan, then you can shepherd that into funding or put it on an agenda to actually accomplish it. So I think having a clearer, um, uh, format of the plan that specifically identifies, you know, these are the current conditions, this is why it works or why it doesn't work, and therefore we're making the implementation recommendation to be this. And so the implementation recommendation then is based on the condition and what needs to come out of those conditions in the future. Um, I found just generally there's, and we've discussed this ad nauseum, but how it just kind of jumps in the middle of these conversations and just kind of makes these recommendations a little bit out of the blue. Um, so it doesn't seem like it's necessarily tied into a cohesive narrative. Um, so that's, so that's again, gonna be more of a structural kind of recommendation than a content recommendation. Um, uh, and then just overall, I feel like there was in recognition that there's not gonna be any parks and rec in there, which I still feel like is a violation of the MPC requirement to just straight up not even allude to it in any way, shape, or form. Um, I feel like there was a number of uh, elements that were kind of glossed over. You know, we have no discussion really about um, the, 
the civic groups, the other volunteer groups, kind of the other entities that are working within the township to provide the resources and the expertise and the uh, programming and the other things that go into making the township the township. Um, so a lack of discussion about kind of a lot of these, I don't want to call them fringe groups, but it, you know, the, the plan really did heavily focus on a couple key areas. Um, and so it's less comprehensive in that it doesn't actually address a lot of the other things that kind of go into um, just the, I'm going to say administrative and kind of uh, administrative adjacent components um, and groups and agencies and organizations. Um, so I'll just leave it at that for now. Okay. All right. I, I, I wanted to do this just so everyone had a chance to kind of get a sense for, unless, uh, Jack, I'm sorry, you only came up, do you have any more you want to add before we? No, okay. to be honest, I want to see the revised draft. And also I want to know what kind of comments you guys sent on this draft, because I just felt like there was so much in it that I wanted to talk about and ask people questions about that I resisted the urge to say, I think this should be changed because Frankly, I don't know better in some cases. Okay. Well, um, one advantage, or I don't know if it's an advantage, but uh, when we do reconvene at the end of October, the consultant will be here. So he can probably fill you in with a, or answer your questions a lot better than, than I can say or anybody else on the board can. Okay. He, he, he was at all the meetings. Uh, with the steering committee, he was at the public meetings that were held. Okay, so he, he has all the background information. He's familiar with comprehensive plans, so sh he should know from a legal perspective what needs to be included, what doesn't need to be included. Okay, so we'll have the opportunity to ask him our questions also, and hopefully it'll give us a better understanding of why things are the way they are. And we don't like it, we don't like it. You know, we'll ask them to change it. Angelo, just a quick clarification on one thing I said. At the meeting where you started explaining what some of the text in the draft meant, it was like light bulbs going off all over the place for me. And I thought it was kind of a poignant moment because obviously there's a lot of time and effort, hard work that was put into this by lots of people and, and it, Hopefully, with the revisions, it'll be able to bring out a way at least that I can access, you know, really what, what the thinking is behind it. Well, I, I'm hoping the fact that it's taken this long to re revise the draft um, is an indication that, you know, there's better uh, formatting or whatever you want to call it that, that we'll be able to follow the report better or understand it better or whatever. Angelo, uh, do, you yes? mind, do you mind if I ask what the format of the review will be? Will we be doing it like a page turn or will it just be like randomly going down the line with questions? I, I don't want to say it's random, but um, I, I guess each of us will, will have a chance to fully discuss our views and opinions, okay? with the benefit of having input from the consultant, okay? And then based upon that discussion, we'll decide whether or not the report needs to be modified and we make a recommendation that it be changed or that we agree that it's okay the way it is based upon further explanation that we got. And we'll do that on a case-by-case, -case, a person-by-person -person basis. Okay, but let's say multiple people have views or they want to contribute to a similar item, would we all be able to? Well, whatever. Rec or yeah. would we just go through it and then come back to it. I guess. Whatever recommendation. Let's say you come up with a recommendation, mm -hmm. and we'll listen to your explanation and what your feelings are. We'll see what the consultants input has, and then we'll each of us will chime in. We'll say, "Yeah, that makes sense," or "Why don't we say it this way?" Or you know, kind of like make an emotion almost. You know, we will modify it if we have to. But I don't, I don't want, you know, to present, you know, seven times five, 35 yeah. recommendations to the Board of Commissioners, right. unless we have to. I mean, 
if if we're that bad, if it's that bad, then we're probably going to require him to do a lot more work or, or yeah. the consultant do a lot more work. And then my second question is, do you expect that he'll be able to add um, all the comments that we received and some of them in passing, like from the Historic Association and the Shade Tree Committee, will those be included in this or will we have to? I think it's our it? job to incorporate those comments into our into recommendations. Our okay. You agree or no? If that's how he's accepting the comments, I mean, they did make the comments in public meetings, so I don't know if they're also making a formal recommendation on this. They're making a formal, the, the, the Or I'm providing a formal comment. I mean, because we have the formal comment from some of them. That, right. So I don't know. So we can, I think we can recommend it by, by reference if they've produced a document, because I know, like, um, Discover Haverford gave us like a document that we can then just reference. So I don't know that we necessarily. I I think it's our job to take into account all the the comments and written correspondence that we received and formulate them into our recommendations to the board of commissioners. I don't know that we can present each piece of correspondence to the board of commissioners. They hear, figure out what to do. Right, that's fair. You know. I think that's our job is to is to listen to all this public comment and take that under advisement when we make our recommendations. So it's it's you know, there's a lot of work on our part, you know, but like I said, a lot of the a lot of the comments we received, you know, some of it's based on misinformation, which we, you know, hopefully can we straighten that out to the best we can. Uh, there's not much we can do about not receiving enough notification. Hopefully people will pay attention as we move forward. But I think it's our job to present the Board of Commissioners with a plan that that reflects our unified opinion and after taking into account all the public comments that we receive, whether it's written or verbal. And if people in the community who don't like our recommendations or there are people who gave us written comments and don't think we've addressed them adequately, then they'll go to the public hearing and let the commissioners know. You know, we, we I mean we have to make a judgment call at some point. So we've we've received everyone's input. Right. And then we have to make a recommendation. So it, it's like, you know, when we do a subdivision or land development review, you have people stand up and they they make their comments and who doesn't like the fact that we're cutting down trees or, you know, the rabbits aren't going to have a place to live anymore, things like that. I mean, we listen to those comments and then we make our recommendation, but you know, we we give the comments the attention they deserve, I guess. You guys okay with that down there? Okay. So, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us still, but I think we can do it. And hopefully we can do it in one night. And our focus on the 27th will be, you know, our discussions and our recommendations. Okay, so bring your breakfast with you that time. All right, so I've done a lot of talking. Anybody else have anything they want to say before we go home and watch Thursday Night Football? No? No? no. Or whatever you ladies watch. I don't know if you watch football or not. What, you think I don't watch football? I don't know. I do. I don't watch, watch football. I'm not going home to watch football. <laughs> I know. No Hopefully we'll all be willing, wearing Philly red when we come back. Yeah. For 27. Ange, if I may ask. Um, Ange, I'm sorry. If I may ask. It, would there be any opportunity for us to meet earlier since we know it's going to be a long night? We can't meet as a group because the meeting's not advertised. Okay. So there's a legal responsibility that we have to okay. uh, follow, if you will. So we could meet, again, you guys can meet on the 13th and, and go through this stuff. I mean, I, I have no problems, you know, Okay. I'm gonna, I mean, I'll tell you now, I'm going to support whatever you guys think is, is best, you know. And I don't have to be here to, 
to listen to that. I, I trust your judgment. You're all residents. You've all heard the same stuff I've heard, you know, so. Mm -hmm. We're all big boys and girls, so we can handle this. But if you want to meet on the 13th, we can. I just, just I won't be here, that's all. I'm sorry that I will miss the 27th. I know. Well, what, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you guys want to meet? Do you think it would be worthwhile meeting on the 13th? Go ahead. I mean, I can watch on TV when I get home or whatever. No. It has to be has to be open to the public and it has to be advertised. Um, your choice. You need four to tango. Well, now it sounds like the 13th is not good for, I'm the only one who seems not available on the 27th. So uh, no, I think we should. If, 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 if you want to get together on the 13th, it's. Well, I don't know that we're going to have a quorum. Well, Lou doesn't have to go to his reunion if he doesn't want to. But you'll have four. You have you, Bob, David, and Jack. I'll be here. Out on the 13th. Yeah. I mean, we, we started this whole thing with only four people. If you remember our first meeting, we only had four here. Did we? Yeah. Um, I mean, either that's either way. I'll, I'll just type up my comments. Okay. Well, let's, I mean, what do you want to do? You want to meet on the 13th? It's... I just don't, I mean, it's already the 22nd. I just don't know when we're going to get it and if everyone's going to have time to read it and digest it enough to have a meaningful conversation on the 13th. So I, I don't know, I don't want to, like, force the issue if it, we're just going to be spinning our wheels. I, I, well, hopefully you'll have the chance to review it before we meet, okay? And from what I understand, any changes that were made to the draft would be in italics. So you'll be able to tell immediately what part of the document was changed. But is he taking out the italics that were in the... Yeah. This, so everything will be not italic, not italics, and then, because then we'll have two different kinds of italics. I know, because uh, we already saw the first set of my talent. Right. Okay. So, and I'm hoping that the comments that he's addressing aren't that dramatic as far as the content of the comprehensive plan. More dramatic changes would come after we present our recommendations. I have a strong request. Whatever uh, form he shows the changes, whether it's right throughs and or not. I'd like to see one. I'd be happy to see that showing the changes. Right. I would also really want to see just a clean, finished draft. Because for me, I'll just start reading it later. And the rest, Alex and Cross Outs will be corrections. And I think it's helpful to read it. I, I don't. I mean, if you got two documents that say the same thing, and one has italics and one doesn't, what difference does it make? I don't know if he's going to have the track change. I don't think it's going to be like track changes exactly. where he has where he has strike through. I think it's just going to be the finished document, but it's just going to be parts of it are going to be italicized. All right. See, see here. So he's going to take that sentence and what I crossed out and put in. Hopefully, he'll have that in italics. Cross out? No. No, the cross out won't be there anymore. Just yeah, the okay. Okay, so, Jack, you want to meet on the 13th? Let's say you have the revised draft by this weekend. Do you want to meet on the 13th? Uh, yes. Yes. Lou? I absolutely want to meet, and I will be here unless a particular person also goes to that reunion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Yes. No. Yes. yes. 
Yes. We meet on the 13th. Yep. Will that be the final meeting we nope. will have as a group? No. We'll, so we'll still meet on the 27th. So, yes, the 13th. Okay. And Julia's not sure. We have one, two, we have four definite okay. yeses, okay? And that's a four. All right. Why one have to be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll, we'll have a meeting on the 13th. The only item on the agenda will be a uh, discussion of the comprehensive plan by the Planning Commission. And then we will meet again on the 27th of October to hopefully make recommendations to the board of commissioners. Okay? And I I trust you guys, maybe not with my kids, but everything else. Yeah. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Okay. Anybody else have anything else they want to say? No. Okay. There's no minutes for us to look at tonight. We There were minutes from August eleventh. Oh, we do have minutes from August 11th. Okay, everybody have a chance to look at those. And anybody have any comments or corrections? Or I'll make a motion we accept the minutes from the August 11th meeting as submitted. David, second. Any comments, discussion? All in favor? Aye. And uh, I'll make a motion if we adjourn. Thank you, seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, guys.